aerodynamic. So far, under planning and scheduling, the first topic we already introduced about the concept of planning, the importance of planning, and then we introduced the concept of plan, uh, scheduling technique, networking diagram, and now, okay, we want to zoom in into aerodynamic, okay, or simply call AOA, AOA diagram, okay. All right. Step in construction of network diagram or any diagram, doesn't matter whether it is AOA or AON, the concept is always similar. First, drawing. Why you need to refer drawing? Well, if you are a contractor during tendering stage, the information that you will get is only the drawing specification or tender document. Tender document will basically consist of drawing, specification, and then BQ. Um, and then term and condition. That that's it. That, that that's that's all that you basically have. And how exactly are you going to imagine things which basically uh, you do not have much information. Well, that is the usage of drawing. Drawing is the one that can you can basically visualize. Maybe in the future, we are going to use a lot of uh, what we call uh, BIM or whatever in, internet things. You can get um, uh, the model of the building in a 3D, 4D, whatever D. So you can imagine the project in a, a better ways, okay? But based on drawing alone, you can basically have some kind of visual, visualization of what you, the client expect you to construct. Specification, why you need to basically read or understand specification? Specification basically related to the quality, quality of the constructed um, things that you, you need to do. Plus, in some somehow, in order to produce things according to what is being required, somehow it will um, it will somehow I would say uh, require uh, require time because sometimes if you want to do things according to the high quality or standard, so you need to do things very properly. Okay. Okay, very properly or accurately. So when you want to do things accurate in accurate manners, on a precise manners, for sure it has something to do with the timing. So this is how specification basically relate to the scheduling. And BQ, for sure, BQ you need because you need to calculate the duration of an activity based on the productivity rate. So BQ is there, and uh, later on, you need also to know the cost of each activity. From the BQ, you know the quantity, and from that, you will you can calculate the cost of uh, each of the activity, giving uh, uh, the uh, resources that you know. Resources, I mean, man and machine, other than material. Knowledge of executing the job from experience. This is what we call how, how to do things. Work method. Work method is very important. Okay? Because you use different work method, it will influence the timing of the activity. For instance, you do manual, uh, manual work. Compare if you use some kind of tools, or equipment that will basically make huge differences. Available resources. Okay. In scheduling or in actual work environment, not all resources that you wish to have or you plan to have, you can get. Sometimes you simply cannot get the right uh, type of equipment, the right capacity of equipment, the right number of equipment. Sometimes, for instance, tower crane. 
how many tower crane that you can put in a construction project? Well, you can put many if you have a big, big space or if you are hurry to do uh, construction work. But if your project is very small, your area is very small, you, do not, you cannot simply put a lot of tower crane because it will encroach into other people's area. Okay? So at the end of the day, you resort to only one tower crane. Whereas you might, during your calculation or planning, you say, oh, we require two crane so that we can do faster. But in reality, you simply cannot do that. Constraint in terms of timing, date. Sometimes client is the one that gives you certain uh, date to complete on certain phases of the work. Because sometimes, for instance, if the client do develop um, what we call big area that consists of many, many buildings or many, many uh, phases, the client sometimes want the phase one construction to be speed up. This is like a marketing gimmick. So people normally, uh, the customer, when they saw first phase of development is very fast, uh, getting things completed, then they would like to invest more, to buy more property. Uh, that is what we call marketing gimmick. And then what else? Develop WBS. WBS is the one that we're already talking about because it is very important. This is where our activity are being generated. And then estimate task duration, experience, productivity rate using a US means scheduling guide. This is for US reference. We might not be, uh, if we, even if you refer to, you might not be used uh, in our country or in any other country because the way they do the construction might be different. Assign logical relationship, predecessor, and then log in or input your data into whatever the uh, scheduling software. Okay. Analyze the schedule with regard to resource constraint, resource smoothing. This is what we are going to learn in the second half of the semester. Okay, about resource management. You notice there is a terminology, resource leveling, resource smoothing later on. Okay, example. Activity A and activity B. Okay, for AOA diagram, how to draw AOA diagram, always we start with one note and then arrowhead close with another note. This is activity. Then activity B, if you read this listing, activity A is the one that comes first because it has no predecessor. And then B will come later on, B. Okay. B will be uh, after A. So that's how you draw the activities. Okay. You notice one activity uh, do have one particular nodes and then close by another nodes. Okay, activity A. This is activity A. Start with A, then close with uh, A. Then B is basically the predecessor is from A. So you just simply draw a line and then connect those things with node and then follow by C. Okay. All right. Then A and B. None and none. Meaning to say they start at the same time but they are not connected. So you can do, you can draw something like this. And then C is from A and B. So you ha already have one uh, closing node there. Then basically you just uh, connect from that node. Then uh, the way you read those things is like that. Okay. Okay. So uh, this diagram here. Okay, what does this diagram is trying to tell us? We do have activity K and J. K and J. Okay. They start at the same time and then finish at the same time. And they do share one node, uh, both the same node. Okay, in scheduling, especially AOA diagram, uh, two activities can share one, one node, but not both nodes. 
beginning and ending. The computer might, if we use uh, computer programming for this arrow diagram, the computer will confuse because the computer do not know this activity start with what node and then ending with what node because the way computer recognize is uh, the beginning node and ending node. That's how computer recognize each activity. So this is a bad way of uh, drawing uh, to indicate uh, two activity. Even though, even though we know that this uh, the early start of the following activity basically will take after whichever is the uh, higher value we know, but in terms of drawing, this is not good drawing. So how do we uh, solve this issue? We can do something like this. Okay, one note for K. Okay, and then J, start at the same time. Never mind, just, they're using the same note, it's okay. But the ending note is different, you see? There is one note for J, and ending note for J, and then one ending note for K. But the issue is that, let's say we, we, we do have a start, uh, another activity, J, K, L, for instance. So, K, uh, L, for instance, uh, will start after K and J completed. So how do we do that? So that's why we introduced the dummy activity. Okay, dummy activity. So it basically means the same thing, except that it reflects uh, what we call the, the, a different way of uh, what we call reading, okay, reading the diagram. So we can do something uh, different here, start from starting node and then ending with the closing node for K. And then they do share the same node, that's okay, but the, the starting for J is different. So meaning to say, each of the activity should have different starting node and ending node. They can basically share similar starting or ending node, but they do have different either ending or uh, uh, starting or ending notes. That should be the way to draw the arrow diagram. Okay, activity M. Okay, start with this one, for instance. Then activity N, also similar. So R, R indicate activity uh, from M and N. So that's why we introduce dummy. Whereas S, doesn't have any relationship with M at all because you notice that the dummy arrow is going into the R, not going into the S. So this is how we read uh, the diagram and how we introduce dummy activity in order to reflect the relationship. Okay, you can try yourself with these two examples anyway. Okay. But since we do not have the face-to-face -face class, that is difficult to, to do some kind of class activities. Okay, sample of network uh, project or network diagram. Let's say we do have list of activity A until Q and then we do have duration, duration and then predecessor, okay? Predecessor, so how do we draw this network diagram? You notice A and B doesn't have any predecessor. From that, you know, okay? You draw step by step, okay? Start from A, B, K. You draw one note. What is 10 mean, 10, 30? That is basically the naming of the note, not numbering. We can start with the low value, such as 1, 2. You can start with 10, 20, 30. You can start with 100, 200. If you have, in terms of 1,000 of activity, you can start with 1,000, 2,000. But that, uh, what is the reason you start with a big number? So that if you have something in between to insert into, then basically you can put number 11 node, 12 node. 13 node. You see, you have you do have extra uh, numbering that you can uh, slot in. So then you draw A close by one node. Okay. So it doesn't matter how do you draw. 
and whether the uh, the arrow could be straight line or curved line, whatever line, it doesn't matter. Arrow just indicate uh, activity on paper only. Okay, then C. How about C? Okay, so we already have A previously. Then C, you just simply draw one branch branches close with uh, one node there. Okay, then you put C and then the underneath of the arrow, you just simply put the activity uh, duration. Then D. D basically uh, coming from A. A is already there. Just connect to D. And then E. E is here. You connect from B. Sometime, some of you might later on, when you draw a network diagram, you might put, uh, instead of uh, F here, you might put E here you might basically put F here. So it doesn't matter. You can mess around with uh, the, what we call the location of, uh, or the position of the, uh, the arrow node and whatnot. But later on, the most important thing is the connection. The connection must be correct, okay? Where do you connect the activity together? E, E is there and then F. And then G. Okay, G, you connect from C, H here, you connect from D, then I, you connect from E, then J, you connect from F. Okay, then uh, K, uh, now K, K is here, K is, uh, do have two predecessors, C and H, K is basically from C and H. Where is H? H is already here. Then you can just simply can draw nodes and then draw arrow close with one node and then this is K. All right, so that is settled for K. But then K is also do have process, predecessor from C. You notice from our diagram here previously, we do have C, we do have G already. So C is up here. And how do we connect K from C if it is up there? We cannot simply just put one line because one line indicates an arrow and activity. So that's why we use what we call dummy, dummy line. So once you have the dummy line, the arrow must be correct, which direction. Then the way you read K will start after C and H completed. So now you already fulfill the requirement of the, uh, the right relationship. So that's why I say to you, uh, dummy was introduced in order to fill in the gap huh? when we do have this kind of situation where we wanted, where we wanted to connect to the uh, whatever activity, but simply the activity is far away. We can just simply use dummy activity. Dummy activity do not have any duration, zero duration. You notice from our previous, uh, previous uh, what we call information of the project, it doesn't specify any dummy activity at all. No activity, no dummy activity is mentioned. But when you draw, then basically you might require uh, dummy activity. It doesn't matter how many uh, dummy activity you input in this, okay, as long as the connection is right. And then L, where, where is L? Okay, L is here, connected from I, all right. Then M, uh, M is another situation. M is here. This is M, connected from K, okay, K is here, all right. But then M is also connected from I. I is down here. So how do we do that? Again, this is another dummy. We can call it dummy number two. This is dummy number one. Sometimes we, we put it small d, d1, indicate dummy. All right, then n, where is n? n is here, connected from g. Then p, p is here, connected from j. And then q is connected from both l and p. And then we close with one note. We start with one note and then close with one note. You notice that all the activity are interconnected together. 
This is what we call network diagram. Okay, arrow diagram, uh, network diagram, everything should be interconnected. Okay, this is a good diagram where everything connected. Then you notice there is a, a box that we need to fill in. That box indicate what? Okay, this is what we call early start, early finish. Late start, late finish. Date or duration, okay? So that will re be repeated for each other activity. Each activity do have early start, early finish, early start, early finish. But you notice that for A is uh, early start, early finish, late start, late finish. But how about, uh, for instance, uh, C? C also do have early start, early finish, late start, late finish. But then for C, this early finish will be changed to early start of C. This will be early finish. This will be late start. This will be late finish. Why? Because there is not, uh, there is not many spaces that we can input all those data. So one have to replace another. Uh, this is the issue with the uh, arrow diagram, where basically when you delete or replace values with uh, another value, which is um, uh, to be put into that slot, then the value is not being shown or being hide. Later on, when you want to use for the sake of calculating total float, uh, what we call not total float, the free float especially, then it becomes difficult. Unlike the AON or PDM diagram, later on you will notice the differences between AOA and AON PDM diagram with regard to uh, this value, the, the, the placement of early start, early finish, late start, late finish. Okay, now we want to do the calculation, forward pass. Okay, forward pass. Forward pass, remember, is the calculation from the left until the end of the project to get what value? Early start plus duration equivalent to early finish. So you just simply want to get the early finish values. So you start with zero, okay, values. If you do manual calculation, so you start with zero. You do not start with one, okay? But in a scheduling diagram, uh, there is no zero value actually. Actually, they start with one. One or equivalent to whatever date that you, you begin with. Okay. So zero, everything should be plus with duration. Zero plus eight, equivalent to eight, put it here. That's how you, you repeat the calculation from the left until the end. Okay, next, C. 8 plus 9 equivalent to 17. Then for B, 0 plus 7 equal to, equivalent to 7. And for G, 17 plus 8 equivalent to 25. Okay, so you complete this one, this one, and this one. Okay, how about D? 8 plus 4 equivalent to 12. All right. Then how about E? 7 plus 10 equivalent to 17, all right? How about F? 7 plus 11 equivalent to 18, okay. All right, so you already finished until A, B, C, G, D, and then E, F. Okay, how about H? This H, notice H. There are two arrow coming in. When there are two arrow, you evaluate one by one. First, for dummy activity, which have zero duration, 17 plus zero, which is equivalent to 17, as one values, alternative. 12 for H, 12 plus three equivalent to 15. So for sure, 17 is much bigger value that should, put, should be put into this box, okay. Then for I, 17 plus 5 equivalent to 22, all right, settle. For the, for the node which basically only have one arrow going in, that is easy to calculate. You just simply 
add up the value and put into the, that box. But when there are too uh, many incoming arrow into one particular node, then you need to be very careful. Okay. 18 plus 9 for J equivalent to 27. All right. You already complete on that thing. Now, let's uh, go into node number 100. There are two incoming arrow. How do you calculate? For the dummy, 22 plus 0 equivalent to 22. One value. From K, 17 plus 7 equivalent to 24. So you notice 24 and 22. 24 is much bigger. That's, what, that's why 24 is getting into the notes there. For the starting of M. And then how about uh, K? How about K already finished? Uh, and then how about L? Okay, 22 plus 3 equivalent to 25 as one value. And then from P, 27 plus 4 equivalent to 31 as another value. So 31 is the higher value that will be put into uh, the early start of Q. So the last uh, activity is basically N, M, and Q. So from using N as activity, 25 plus 12 equivalent to 27 as one values. 24 plus 7 is 31. 31 plus 2, 33. Uh, you notice the bigger value is 37. So now we already have, we already have the answer. 37 is the, the overall project duration for our uh, project. Okay. All right. So let me pause this thing. Okay. Sorry for uh, disturbance there. All right. So now we already answered the question, uh, how many days the project uh, can be completed? Uh, basically 37 working days, solid working days. This does not include holiday and whatnot. So if the question asks you about the date, then basically you need to, uh, you need to, okay, okay, sorry. All right, so you already uh, get the answer, 37 days, but then if the question asks you to um, answer in date, so date will be given when the project shall start. From that, you look at the calendar, but during the final exam or whatever, normally uh, we, will, we will give you the starting date so that you can easily remember, maybe on the first date of the exam or whatever, from that, you should know uh, roughly, okay, from to calculate, even if you do not uh, have the calendar, okay, you can calculate manually, as simple as that. All right, then that will be default pass. Okay, so next is basically the backward pass. The backward pass, you notice that, huh? before we, I forgot, uh, for when you do the backward pass, you can basically answer. You can basically answer uh, two questions. Early start and early finish, for sure, you will know. You can answer one is basically the project duration, the overall project duration. Then you can also answer, you know what? The uh, free float. Ah, you can answer free float. Okay, how do you answer free float? Okay. okay, let's take a look at these uh, values. Okay, you can answer free float. How to answer the free float value for each of the activity? Okay, you can take a look at the formula, but I normally do not use that formula much because formula is there, but you can never remember formula exactly during the exam. Okay, now free float. Free float, definition of free float, okay, is the, the time that one activity have without 
uh, delaying or encroaching into the following activity. So when you want to calculate free float, you must basically have a pair of activity, A and B, A and what, uh, that is the example. And you notice that the free float normally appear for the nodes where the node is basically uh, do have uh, multiple arrow going in. So you notice that this activity, H and dummy activity, if there is a, another activity, one of them could have a free float, whereas uh, another one might not have the free float. Similarly, for L and P, uh, one of them must have a free float, whereas another one doesn't have the free float. Okay, so free float definition. If you want to use a formula, you can use this formula, early start minus early finish. But we, uh, you must basically refer to which activity, okay? It is not for that activity. For instance, let's take a look at activity P. Let's say I want to calculate activity, uh, free float for activity P. Okay, the early start refer to the early start of Q. Q, Q, huh? draw this thing properly, Q. Whereas early finish refer to the early finish of P itself. That is the concept. Okay, now let's calculate what is the free float for P. Okay. We know the early start of Q here, Q. The early start of Q is given here in this box, 31 day. What is the early finish of P? The early finish of P is here, 27 plus four equivalent to 31. Okay, 31. So the early finish of P is equivalent to 31. 31. So meaning to say 31 minus 31 equivalent to zero. So meaning to say activity P does not have the free float, zero free float. But how about activity L? As I mentioned to you, when they are incoming arrow, one of the activity must have the free float value, whereas another one might not have. So in this case, P doesn't have any free float, zero. How about L? Okay, L, using the same formula, let me write down here, FF for L equivalent to early start of Q, same, minus early finish of L. Early start of Q is the same, 31, minus early finish of L. What is early finish of L? You notice, this is early start of L, 22, plus three, plus three equivalent to 25. So meaning to say L will finish as early as 25th day. When you deduct this one, then you will get the value of uh, six. Okay, six days. Okay, that is the free float of L. So L basically do have extra six days, which L can play around in such a way, L can be delayed in terms of the starting of L. So meaning to say L uh, can start a little bit later. L can start at 23rd day, 25th day, 26th day, 20 what day? Within the allowable, uh, what we call, Time. But if L goes beyond six days, maybe seven days, or somehow being delayed for whatever reason, beyond uh, six days or in seven days, you notice that this value will be changed 32. And when this value will be changed, subsequent value, uh, the end of uh, activity Q will be changed. But fortunately, 
the critical path is not coming from this line, so it is still okay. Okay, so you notice that we can calculate the total project duration and the free float for each of the activity using this kind of concept. Okay, in final exam, normally the uh, this kind of uh, work will require you to, to, to spend around maybe half an hour of your time because it is a very lengthy process. But then you need to answer this uh, question. You need to answer the question for free float for some of the activities or even the total float. Okay, total float, we will uh, refer to this diagram. And, okay, backward pass, okay, backward pass. Backward pass is to get the values from uh, going backward. Okay, backward calculation. What is the value that you are going to get? LS equivalent to LF minus duration. Okay, so how to do that? This value, the end value, you will copy into this box. You will copy and then using the back arrow, going back the arrow, that's how you calculate with minus with the duration. 37 minus 12 equivalent to 20, 25. 37 minus 7 equivalent to 30. 37 minus 2 equivalent to 35. Okay, how about G? 25 minus 8 equivalent to 17. Okay, you complete on that thing. How about K? 30 minus 7 equivalent to uh, 23. All right, settle. Uh, now, note this note, 100. There are two backward arrow, uh, there are two arrow uh, going back into this note. You must evaluate uh, two, uh, each of the note. How do you evaluate? 30 minus 0. 0 is this dummy equivalent to 30 as one values. How about here? 35 minus 3. 35 minus 3 equivalent to 32, 32. So for going back arrow, uh, backward path, we will take the smallest value among whatever the arrow. So that's how 30 is there. And then, how about P? 35 minus 4 equivalent to 31. How about J? 31 minus uh, 9 equivalent to 22. How about I? 30 minus 5 equivalent to 25. So we already complete on that thing. And then uh, uh, this one, KH, 23 minus 3 equivalent to 20. You notice that for this value here, 23 minus 0 equivalent to 23 as one value. But then the, the value will be coming from uh, the uh, the pre, the uh, what we call note number 19 so that's why the value is there okay how about uh, we go into this first 30 22 minus 11 will be 11 as one value or 25 minus 10 which is equivalent to 15 for sure 11 is there going into this box Okay, how about D? Uh, how about D and C going into this uh, uh, note there? 20 minus 4 equivalent to 16 or 17 minus 9 equivalent to 8. So 8 is there. And then uh, lastly, 11 minus uh, 7 equivalent to 4 or 8 minus 8 equivalent to 0. So that's how 0 is coming back into this uh, box. So that is the end of calculation. So when you completed this calculation, you can uh, go to another calculation, we call it total float. But from the diagram itself, without calculating the total float, you will notice something, the red line. The red line indicate critical path. In this uh, diagram, only one critical path. And you notice that, all the values, the early start, early finish, all the same at that particular notes. Uh, from that, you already know this is the critical path.
because the rest doesn't have that kind of characteristic. But in order to, uh, to calculate, let's say if you do not notice, but for sure you will notice, if you do not notice, what is the, uh, the what we call the formula for total float? Uh, now, I want to show you the formula for the total float so that you can calculate easily without even remembering the formula. Total float. Let's focus on this, uh, this activity, activity I. This is what we call early start, early finish, late start, and uh, late start is here, late finish. Okay, the formula for total float is basically total float equivalent to late finish minus uh, early start minus duration of that activity for that particular activity of I. So in this situation, 30 minus 17 minus 5 equivalent to uh, that is the the differences, okay? The differences that you can uh, get in order to know the value of total float, okay? Which is equivalent to eight. Mm. But you notice here for A, C, G, and the total float value TF equivalent to zero. Zero, zero, zero. When the total float equal to zero, that means that activity is critical activity. When that critical activity is connected together, they are being called critical path. As simple as that. So what is the critical path? Critical path is the longest duration in a network. You notice that there is a red line there. In this network diagram, there are many paths. I can spot one, and then two, three, four, five, six paths. There are six paths in this diagram. Path mean from the starting, you go through here until the end, or uh, that would be one path. This is one path. The second path would be from uh, 10, 20, then 50, straight to the uh, 140. That would be another, another second path. The third path would be coming from here, this one, etc. You can calculate there are six paths. And if you add all these value in that path, what value that you need to add? You can add the value of duration, 8 plus 9 plus 8 plus 12, that is equivalent to 37. This is the longest duration. The rest will not be uh, equivalent. The rest is, you notice, eh? 31 plus 32, this is only uh, 33 days. This is only uh, 31 days and the other will be less than 37. So critical pass indicate when total float is basically, uh, that is basically the uh, longest duration for the, the network to complete, the longest pass. And you can basically calculate based on total float. But for AOA diagram, you can just simply add, um, all of the activity based on each path, then automatically you, you can uh, answer the question already. One of the, again, exam question, we want to know what is the critical path for this diagram? As simple as that, okay? So there are a few exercises that you can take a look uh, based on this diagram and then how to calculate, okay? This is the answer. From that, you already know, okay? You can easily answer, this is what we call uh, project duration. That will be one question. 
what could be the critical path? You notice the critical path is the longest duration. If you add up this path, eight plus eight plus seven plus eight, this could be, this basically the longest path. That is the critical path. And then you can calculate the total float, total float, and free float. Uh, free float normally for selected activity. Total float on uh, be only one for selected activity. But if you do not know the if you do not know the concept of critical path, then you calculate all. You will be wasting your time. Okay, uh, the critical path you can just simply know when this thing is the same. 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 This is the same. So that must be the critical path. As simple as that. Don't waste your time to calculate everything, especially during the exam. I'm just telling you the uh, short way of doing things. Okay? This is the critical path. All right. Then uh, you see there is a dummy activity. Dummy activity. You can just uh, go through this uh, concept, okay, by yourself to understand the uh, how to get the, the value. Okay, similarly, based on this uh, list of activity, okay, predecessor, by right, uh, you should try to draw the diagram without even looking at the answer, you should try. Because the most important thing in network development is to get the right diagram first. Then later on, once the diagram is correct, then you input in your uh, values. Then only you will get the right answer. And then you will mark with the uh, color, color, whatever, the uh, critical path, and etc. Okay, so that is the end of uh, arrow diagram. Okay, let me stop recording. That.